Hey and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you a what I eat in a day. I'm also going to be sharing with you guys an at-home workout, so stay tuned for that. Ever since quitting going vegan, I have put on probably close to five pounds. So what I'm doing now to kind of get myself back on track is I'm trying to incorporate bigger portions of these lower calorically dense foods. I think anytime you're eating a very restrictive diet, you are more conscious of the decisions that you're making and what you're putting in your mouth. And I think that that goes for any restrictive diet, keto, um, Whole30, anything like that where you're being very conscious of your food, you are gonna eat better. Um, so going from being vegan to not, I just kind of like went overboard for a short period. So I'm trying to get myself back on track. So today I'm just gonna be showing you kind of what one of those less calorically dense days will look like. All right, so this is breakfast. It's really simple to make. You pretty much add a little bit of broth at the bottom of the pan and I'm using this um, beef broth, but you could use any kind of like bone broth for extra nutrients. Um, and I use that to steam everything up because you're eliminating using extra oils. I rather get my fat from either from some kind of clean meat or from avocado or from seeds, nuts versus like just added oil. So yeah, I steamed everything up with a little bit of beef broth. I added in kale, some raw mushrooms, some lima beans. I added in some salsa, some jarred salsa. This is a really good combination. You should try it. Some salt and a little bit of garlic powder as well. And then I just let that boil for a little while to soften up the greens. And then once some of the liquid had reduced out, then I'm gonna go ahead and just drop an egg right on top. Gonna cover it and let it go for about, I wanna say about six minutes. Um, and that's gonna leave a slightly runny yolk. You can go a little bit shorter if you want it more runny, or you can go a little bit longer if you like it completely cooked. And then I'm serving this up with just a side of some leftover jasmine rice. And I was gonna share with you guys, the total calories for this whole meal was only 266 calories. Um, and it had 15 grams of protein, as well as 39 grams of carbs. So this is a pretty good meal. It's kind of low in calories if you're planning on working out, but I know what my maintenance calories are, and so this is like a perfect meal for me. The reason why I like eating like this is because I'm eating all of this. Like this is a huge bowl. I'm gonna be super satiated by the end of this. I'm one of those people that has to eat a lot. So if you are somebody that's constantly hungry and you're trying to lose weight and you always feel like you're starving and you always feel like you're dieting, eating low caloric foods is the way to go because you can just bulk up, use a small, like I use, I put an egg on here. This would not be considered a low calorie food, but I put one egg just to add in some, some fats and like some good amount of protein but the rest of my meal is bulked up with mostly like these greens, beans, tomatoes, onions, garlic, mushrooms. So as long as you're getting a bulk of your calories or a bulk of your meal with low calorie foods, it's a win. I know a lot of people don't like talking calories, but if you are trying to gain weight, you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to maintain your weight and you are having difficulty, calories are very important. Like there's no way around it. Yes, you, if you are, which you should be, focused on nutrition as well and eating a balanced diet, yes, that's very important. But for your weight loss goals or your weight gain goals or anything like that, calories are important. And, excuse me, it's not like they're important forever, but tracking your calories can be very beneficial just so that you can better understand what you're eating and it'll help you make better choices as well. So I am a firm believer in calories and. I don't track them all the time, but when I'm seeing a big fluctuation in the scale or I'm wanting to see some kind of changes to myself, I will start tracking them and I'll track them for about a week or so. And then during that time period, I realize, okay, I really am liking this. I'm really liking this. And then I start incorporating those foods more. So there's my calorie rate. As I'm eating, I'm sitting here thinking of all these things I want to tell you. But this does seem like not a lot of calories and I don't want to encourage people that are already not eating enough, but I have an idea already of what I'm eating throughout the day. And I know that tonight we're having spaghetti for dinner. And so I look at the end of the day, my total calories for that day. I'm not looking at specifically each meal. Cause for me, it's easier to have this 233 calories now and be able to have a little bit of cushion for later versus 
I gotta have 500, 500, 500. You know what I mean? All right, so I just watched a Brooke Entz video on YouTube. It was just like one of her vlogs, but she did this really cool workout. Um, and so I'm gonna be doing that. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I think this was actually a conditioning training that she did, but I'm using this as like an upper body day. So I just did legs like two, day, two days ago, so my legs are pumped. Um, so this is gonna be more upper body focused but it's gonna loosen up my legs as well because there's a bit of running. Okay, so the workout goes like this. You're going to run 400 meters and then you are going to do four rounds of five dumbbell deadlifts, five dumbbell cleans, and then five dumbbell overhead presses. You're gonna do four rounds of that, then run 400 meters, do three rounds of that, 400 meters, two rounds of that, 400 meters, and then one round to end, okay? hella hard her time was like I want to say it was like 12 minutes and mine was like 16 minutes so that just goes to show you like how much more in shape she is than me um all right so that was the first part of the workout the second part is a conditioning workout that she mentioned in the same video and for this workout we're going to be doing a hundred um, body weight Goal crushers so essentially you kind of get in push-up position and then go into go to your elbows and then back up I'll show I'll insert a clip um so we're gonna do a hundred of those and then we're gonna do a hundred curls it, I think she, hers were alternating dumbbell curls but I only use five pound weights so we're gonna just do together a hundred and I actually broke mine up into sets of 25 so we're gonna do four rounds of 25 body weight skull crushers and 25 curls all right, at this point I can barely like hold up my camera. Um, but anyway, this was a great workout. I highly recommend this. I know this was supposed to be more of an upper body, but oh my gosh, my arms, my core from doing those body weight uh, skull crushers, it, it, my core is pretty tight as well. So this is a great workout on a day that your legs are pumped out. I highly recommend it. It was pretty full body. I burnt almost 200, actually a little over 200 active calories doing that workout. This workout's really great because all you need is dumbbells. I did one heavier set of dumbbells, so I did 20 pound dumbbells for the first set, and then um, for just the dumbbell curls, I did only five pound dumbbells. So, and you could tweak this and make it like heavier, or you could even lighten your weight and try to get a higher pace. So it's kind of just depend on what you're going for for that workout. All right, I'm not really hungry yet, but next time I'm hungry, see you guys there. Okay, lunch. We are going into lunch now, and I just want something fresh and light. I was not feeling anything heavy. So I'm going to be making some summer rolls or fresh rolls. It's like a Thai roll made with these thin rice papers. Don't overcomplicate things. Don't underestimate yourself. This is not that complicated. You do not need to go spend $6 for two of these at your local Asian restaurant because you don't think you can make them. Rice papers, you can get them on Amazon or you can go to a local Asian market and get them. All I do to prep these, to roll them, because they're kind of hard to begin with. So all you do is I get some hot water going right beside my workstation, and I just kind of wet them at the sink, okay? And I wet them till, not till they're completely mushy, but until they go from being like firm, um, 
um, to having like a little bit of, you see how it already looks a little bit different? It has like a little bit of play. So I'll just wet it for a minute. Okay, now it's got, you see how it's starting to bend in? Okay, now this is ready. It still feels a little bit hard, but it's gonna absorb the rest of that water. I then just place it on my workstation, which is my counter. And then I usually will put the lettuce first. I have some chicken here. This is just some leftover grilled chicken breast. I have about three ounces total, not in each roll, but total. A cucumber and some cilantro. You could do any kind of fillings here. And then all you're gonna do for the rolling is you take and completely cover one side, okay? Then you just fold one side in, fold your other side in, and then roll it all the way up. That is your finished um, summer rolls, fresh roll, whatever you wanna call it. They're not complicated at all. You literally wet the rice paper, put your filling in it. You can do shrimp, you can do anything that you have as leftovers. I love these as like a, like shoving leftovers in here. You could even do like um, roasted vegetables that you have in the fridge that were leftovers. You could put those in here. Bell pepper, um, mushrooms, you could put anything in these. And honestly, it took me like, two minutes to put this little tray together and it's gonna take me maybe a minute to roll each one of these. So it's gonna take me five minutes and I'm gonna have a delicious lunch. So let me show you the sauce that I'm gonna have with mine today. For the dressing, I typically like a peanut sauce and some sriracha. So I already had some peanut sauce made in the fridge so I'm not gonna actually show you that process but I'll tell you what is in this. I take a big heaping spoonful of peanut butter um, and then I take a fine grater so I use this one, but a really fine grater. And as long as your ginger is organic and you don't have to worry about like chemicals and pesticides on the skin, I don't even peel it at all. So I'll take, you have your peanut butter in a bowl, you take your ginger, you grate a little bit of ginger. Don't put too much because it can get really spicy. Um, so anyway, you have your peanut butter, you have some fresh ginger. Then I like to add a little bit of seasoned rice vinegar. Um, this is not necessary, but I think it adds a nice balance of acidity to it. And seasoned rice vinegar is actually a little bit sweet. So you're gonna add that, a little splash of soy sauce, and then if it's not sweet enough, you can add some maple. Or if it's not salty enough, add a little bit more um, soy sauce. But I, I, that's my favorite dipping sauce. I don't think there's anyone that wouldn't like these. I highly recommend putting the cilantro in them. I'm not fully tracking calories, but I'm just kind of wanting you to see like how much you can actually get when you're eating foods that are not as calorically dense. So for my three ounces of chicken, that's about, let's see, 75 calories. And then each one of these wraps, um, I think for three wraps, it was 125 calories. So let's see, that's 300, and then a tablespoon of peanut butter. We're looking at under 500 calories. And really the only thing you have to track on this, I'm not gonna track romaine lettuce, I'm not gonna track cilantro or vegetable, like anything like bell peppers, onions, mushroom, none of that. So pick your protein, just do a little bit of that, pick a condiment and be careful with it, but just do a little bit of that and then fill it up with veggies and this can be like super nutritionally dense and lower calorie, so. So for all my recipe people out there, I will link a recipe to something similar to my peanut sauce in the description below, so make sure you check that out. For dinner tonight, I just reheated some spaghetti sauce that I had left over in the freezer. Pro tip there, anytime you make spaghetti sauce, make a huge batch and you can freeze them in either Ziploc bags or I actually will save the jars from the marinara or spaghetti sauce that I have and I refreeze them in that. So I'm just gonna reheat that. I did not see the point in showing you guys our leftovers. So that will conclude today's What I Eat In A Day. Comment below if you enjoyed it and let me know what you guys wanna see next. Outside.